Welcome back to AM Northwest. Our next guest is on a mission to change the way we teach our kids about money. Here with some helpful advice, we welcome money mindfulness expert and author, David Delisle. Good to have you with us, David. So good to be here, Helen. All right, so let's talk about it because really teaching our kids about money is something that feels like everyone should be doing, but oftentimes we don't even like to talk about money. Yeah, that's what's so crazy. It's like one of these biggest taboos and we feel so much shame and insecurity around it. We don't talk about it, but we really need to. And even as parents, letting our kids know, like if we don't know the answers, that's okay. Letting the kids know we don't have the answers, that's that's fine too. But just making these conversations something we have is, is so important. Well, shouldn't we be modeling, shouldn't parents model money, like how to spend money, how to save money, how to use money? Yeah, definitely. I mean, kids are watching everything we do. So how we think about money really has a massive influence. So I think most of us, if we start thinking about our own sort of money habits or the way we think about money, it probably came from childhood. So that's all of these things from feeling like money's bad or I can't have money or I want money or we should really save or spend. All these things are learned through childhood. So, so being a little bit more mindful about what we're actually teaching and modeling is so, so important. Well, are we, some of us wired differently when it comes to money, like are some of us autom are just spenders and some of us are savers. It feels like they're, everyone's born a certain way. For sure, and this is really important. I just had this conversation earlier with some parents. <clears throat> like my older son, he's a spender. And so I talk about money all the time. He's still a spender. And typically what we do is we start shaming our spenders and tell them they should be savers and savers are good and spenders are bad. But that's not the way we should be teaching our kids because that is who they are. So instead, working with who they are and then developing the habits to work around that. So if you start developing developing the habit of saving, that's so much more important than whether you're a saver or a spender. And then whatever's left over, you can spend without that shame and guilt. And, and I think that's a much better way to sort of lead by example with our kids and also to not make our kids feel bad for who they are. Do you think, because uh, this gets brought up uh, among friends of mine, do you think kids should have allowances so they learn how to use their money? As opposed yeah, to, so, and, I, and I'm going to say cash as opposed to a card, but I don't know if there's a difference here. Yeah, I mean, this is a funny one. Like, this is a huge hot topic, so much controversy around it. And for me, it's not whether your kids should have an allowance or not have an allowance. It's more of what you're trying to teach your kids. So if you're trying to teach them how to manage money, then I would give them money to manage. If you're teaching them how to earn money and do stuff that'll earn money, that's a different deal we're trying to teach them. And then there's the idea of whether or not we want our kids to just contribute in the house anyway, because everybody's contributing in the house and that's what we do as a family. So it's really, it's less about whether allowance is good or bad, it's what's the lesson you're trying to teach. And if it's financial literacy, a lot of times you don't need an allowance to do that. And it's even better to not have an allowance to do that. So without an allowance, you can teach kids how to handle money? For sure. Like, it's so, so simple. Like, I, I know we're coming up on to summer vacation for a lot of families, and we're probably going to be doing vacations or doing all these things with our kids and spending money. And instead of making the decisions for the kids, the money that we were planning on spending on them, if you started giving some of that to them, so if you're going to like a fair, for example, and you plan on buying them a bunch of stuff like ice creams and paying for rides, instead that money you plan to spend, if you gave it to them and let them make their own decisions, all of a sudden they can start learning some of that autonomy, choice, budgeting, and they'll make some bad decisions. They'll buy stuff that they actually at the end of the day regret. And that's a lesson in itself as well. Right. So. I think I really encourage letting kids make those choices and it's it's as simple as that. Right. There's a social media trend too that you talk about called loud budgeting. What is that? So it's just this idea, sort of how you're talking about like this taboo, we don't really talk about money. It's this idea of rather than hiding your finances, being a little bit more open about it. So if someone's asking you to go out, say for dinner or drinks, and you're trying to prioritize saving and budgeting and that's just outside of your budget. Just letting them know, you know what, I can't really afford that right now, or I'm actually prioritizing saving and not going out. Can we do something instead? Can we go for a walk? Can we do, you know, come over to my house instead and we'll, we'll have a, you know, a fun games night? Just letting people know that you are budgeting and having these conversations without, without guilt. Well, you, you say that too, but you also touch on there's a rich versus poor mentality as well. And you don't want your kids to take on either, right? 
Yeah, well, I mean, we really glorify. This is back to the, the savers and spenders and good. One's good, one's bad. We do the same with rich and poor. So we have this idea that if you're rich, you're better. Or if you're rich, you're happier. And that's a dangerous place to be in because that's not true. Now, money isn't a bad thing in itself, but if we start thinking that the more we have, the happier we have, people who have more are better, smarter, more successful, it really leads to this endless chase. And this, we see that where we're on this hamster wheel and there's just no end and we just keep going and going and going and forget about the things that are really important. Um, on that, like my younger son said something I loved the other day. He said, often it's the things we take for granted that bring us the most joy. And I mean, he was, this is wow. him discovering a new park and running around and just having the, you know, the greatest day. Yeah. And we can all use a little bit of that. Absolutely. Sort of mindfulness. Absolutely. We want to tell everyone the book is called The Golden Quest. We're going to tell everyone, uh, we'll put it on our website at katu.com. David Delisle, thank you so much. Thanks so much. It's so great to be here. Great talking with you. I learned a lot today. We'll be right back with more AM Northwest.